single day there's new business models and they're constantly evolving and changing and very often they're becoming more complex right because normal transactions are just like well i built what do i have i built mobile phones i'm a mobile phone manufacturer and i'm going to sell you a phone right so i'm going to give you a phone you're going to give me some Give me something. Do you have any money? Give me, oh. <laughs> Give me your watch. No, um, that's, <laughs> that's a transaction, right? So that's a typical traditional transaction. I give you a product, you give me cash, whatever it might be, or I sell you a service, etc. But every now, every time more, there's more transactions involved. Or there's more parties involved in the transaction, be it three or four people. And the, type, the advertising model is a typical one there. So that's very much a chicken and egg scenario. Or you might have products where you might have a, on your app, for example, it might be like a business performance, business intelligence solution, which is like free for autonomous and then PMAs have to pay or something like that. Or you might have different versions. And it's hard to figure out which segment or which market you might actually target first. But you can literally only do one. Right? So when you're pitching your ideas again, you have one customer, one segment with one solution. Okay? And no doubt your solution can do this and this and this and this and this and this and, and we're different because we can do everything. Right? That's really, really difficult to implement. So usually you're solving one problem for one customer segment with one solution. Right? Really, really well. Specifically now, certainly at the beginning and not later on. And you certainly can't do both, right? So two customer segments, we're going to sell to the consumer and we're going to sell to PMAs. You cannot attack them at the same time. Not as a startup because you simply won't have the resources. Um, You've got you to gotta include a lot of emotion <coughs> in the presentation um, because you must really feel the problem that you're solving. Right? Whether you've actually experienced it yourself or somebody close to you, but you have to be able to show empathy with your customers. And not only do you have to feel the problem, you have to make us feel the problem as your audience. Right? So again, it's about the storytelling. Giving us a persona, putting us in the shoes of this person that is swamped with their expenses. Right? Because they can't get through them every month and they're too busy and they have a lot of other stuff to be dedicating to. Um, Keep it visual, really keep it visual. You should not be saying what's written on the slides, right? Because I don't need to see it twice as an audience. So you can have some words on the slide or images and you can actually have a different script, right? And that's okay, they should be connected, but you cannot have a scenario where you're just reading through stuff and you have to provoke emotion. And it doesn't matter if it's negative or it's positive, right? Ideally, you actually have both. Right? You want to take us to a very, very low, depressing, sad, painful place because I cannot surf today. I have been saving for six months to go on the surfing holiday. There's no goddamn waves. I'm spending three hours a day in a car. I want to spend three hours a day on the waves. Right? And then just take me to a happy alternative. Right? A future, a brighter, different future that you guys have created through your solutions. Um, and you have to be full of energy, you have to kill it, you have to go in there and explode. Um, I always recommend that if you have a team, right, if there's a bunch of you, whoever is best at communicating or most comfortable just does the pitch. It doesn't have to be the CEO, it doesn't have to be the girl who had the idea, it doesn't have to be whoever. It's got to be the best communicator on your team and the person that's most comfortable. Is there any metrics, cost of acquisition, have you put this out? lifetime value, how much revenue do you think you can get off each download and each engaged user that you have? And how are you actually validating the market? Does anybody actually want your app? That's the most important question, right? That's the really, will this work or will this fail question. Um, and talk about the team. Who are you guys? Sorry, my slides are coming out a bit crazy here. Um, who are you? Why are you the right team for this opportunity? Yeah, and that's usually to do with your own passions or experience, and your experience can be professional or personal. It really doesn't matter. If you're building something health or medicine related because you've had a close friend or somebody in your family has been really ill and this might help, that is like 10 times more relevant than a professional experience that's not connected, right? So tip into anything that's connected in your background or any of the team members with the problem that you're solving today. Um, and don't forget the ask, right? So typically in an investor pitch, of course, people are looking for money, um, but you can also ask for help. What are you looking for? Introductions to customers, to new team members, 
to technologists, developers, designers, anybody that actually help you build your product and get it out there to market. Um, and kind of just last point, going back to the beginning, just be yourself, go out there, introduce yourself by first name, do everything you can to be comfortable in your own skin as you're presenting this idea. Um, and especially early on, like startup founders are their company, right? They have no brand to sell, they are their brand persona. So whether it be a competition, a jury member, a customer, somebody you're trying to hire, or an investor you're trying to make money from, they're investing in you, right? They're really just backing you and your team because right now as a startup company, there's very little else they can actually trust in. So it's about being yourself, but even exaggerate that. Like I'm way more Irish here than I am in Ireland, right? <laughs> you know, I go out with friends, I go with Americans, with Spaniards, with Germans, whatever, and suddenly my accent gets stronger or my jokes get more localized, you know? And that happens when you travel, right? Because you're kind of holding on a little bit to your roots, but exaggerate what you're good at, right? And that might even be that you're more quiet, or you're more introverted, or you're more pensive or whatever it might be but embrace that, right? Because it's really about authenticity, because again, it's making that connection. And whether it's a customer, investor, somebody you want to hire, team member, distributor, a, ju a jury on a, on a competition panel, if they don't believe what you're saying, or if they don't trust you, I'm, you're not going anywhere. So you might as well put it up front, warts and all, and, and be honest and authentic about what you're actually selling or what you're proposing.